Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before you. I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you for your wondrous grace and mercy. I thank you for your loving kindness, your tender care. I thank you, Lord, that on this communion Sunday, that you laid down your life for us, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you for your blood that has made us whole. We thank you for the cross that you bore for us. Lord, we don't take your blessings for granted. I want to thank you, Lord God, once again for the newly appointed missionaries in the entire missionary department. Lord God, give them your divine guidance and direction. But bless us, Lord, as we prepare to hear from you. Open up our spiritual ears. Let your word have free course in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you and we honor your name today. Save someone. Deliver them. Set them free. Let someone cry out, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen and amen. The word of God reads in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Say to your neighbor one more time, turn to God. And be, and be transformed. Tell the person on the other side, turn to God. Turn to God. Be, transformed. be transformed. May be seated in the presence of God. I have to move along quickly because we have to serve Holy Communion. However, I want the Lord to speak to your heart today. This is a continuation of a series of messages. I'm going to try to catch some of you up the best way that I can in the name of the Lord, but we have been talking about the process of, of God changing our lives. We have talked about spiritual metamorphosis for the last few weeks, and we have learned that it's important for us to acknowledge the process that God is taking us through in the name of the Lord. The process that, that requires us to trust God like never before. We're not going to hate our process. We're not going to abort our process. We're not going to give up on God as it relates to our process, but we are going to stay in the process. Just a reminder from a few messages ago, glory to God, that, that you are going from glory to glory and from faith to faith. And we've talked about the metamorphosis a little bit of the butterfly, the transition from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And I, I really haven't gotten into the meat of that metamorphosis. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going get to get to it this morning, but next week you're going to see it a little bit more clearer. But we have to be mindful that we don't want to make an attempt when God is taking us from faith to faith, when he's taking us from glory to glory to glory. We want to make sure that we don't cut any corners, but we let God make us to what he wants us to be. We have to be mindful that he is processing us just like we made that cake a few weeks ago. How many remember that message in the name of the Lord, the anointing of a pound cake? You had to be here to really understand it, but we have to be mindful that God wants us to go through it he wants us to, to be mindful that he's called us with purpose. He called us, as I've referenced to you many times, before the foundation of the world. He called us before we knew ourselves. We have to be mindful if we cut any corners, we will hinder our growth. How many are ready to grow in God? If you're ready to grow in God, you must be willing to go through the process. How many know that this week we're giving God the praise right now? We're lifting him up right now. Most of you are happy and excited in God right now. But how many know that next week something could happen to, want you, to make you want to abort what God has for you? I want to say to you, don't give up on God. Why? Because he hasn't given up on you. Why quit 
at this stage in your life? Why? Why backslide in this stage in your life? Can somebody testify that regardless of what you're going through, you know that God is there? We have to be mindful if, if we are stagnant in our process. It's usually a result of not being in his word. How many know that the word will make you grow? The word will make you grow up. The word will make you see yourself just as you are. You could be preaching the word so good that your grandson come walking to, down the aisle. Crawling, that is. But we, you have to be mindful that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We have to be mindful that metamorphosis, what we're talking about, has to deal with the process of change and growth. You might ask yourself, why am I not growing? It's probably because you're deficient in his word. Because we have to be mindful the word exposes you to what God says about you. How many remember what God has said about you over the last few weeks? Well, we, we talked about that you're God's workmanship. We talked about your heirs and your joy heirs with God we are sons of God we are peculiar people we're a holy nation and we are royal priesthood the things that God has said about us even if the devil himself showed up at your door he wouldn't be able to talk you out of your purpose but there must be a desire to know his word to rightly divide his word. Not always so that you can teach it, but that you'll know it for yourself. We have to be mindful that the scripture wants, it, it points to us knowing his word. Peter said it like this. 2 Peter 3 and 18 says these words, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. How many know it's time to grow in grace? It says, to him be glory both now and forever. I want you to be mindful that God didn't save you just to go to heaven. Oh, glory to God. God didn't save you just to walk in the holy city, but he saved you that in the meantime, that your life can bring him glory and honor. But how many know you have to go through a process? If I could just go to the butterfly, his development, once again, takes place in the dark. Some people don't know what they're going through and why they're going through, but they know that God is there. When you're going through a spiritual metamorphosis, let me help every person in here. You must intentionally isolate yourself. Oh, glory to God. Y'all going to learn this. When y'all see this caterpillar, you're going to learn that the caterpillar makes a choice. I am not going to remain in this state. But I'm going to spin a cocoon and close myself in. Oh, glory to God. How many know that there's times where it just has to be you and God? When you're going through spiritual metamorphosis, when you're going through change and growth, you must intentionally isolate yourself. Be encouraged that when you isolate yourself, God is with you. Slide number 11. Put up on the screen, Aranda. Sometime you have to remove yourself from people. You got to remove yourself and spend some time alone with God. Young man on the dock, find a picture. We have to be mindful that isolation is when you don't, you shut out the noise around you. Because how many any time you make a move to serve God, all hell tries to break loose. We have a real fresh example right now. Those women that sat before me. Y'all better get ready. Somebody gonna say something to you. They already talking. They already whispering. 
The devil is a lie and the truth is not in him. Anytime you make up in your mind to serve the Lord, anytime you make up in your mind, I'm going to do my best for God, you got to realize, don't try to bargain with the enemy. Don't try to justify to the enemy what God is doing in your life. Make up in your mind to the enemy. Say, look, if you want to talk about me, talk to God because he's the one they call me, not you, not you. When you isolate yourself, the Lord reveals himself to be Jehovah Shammah. Everybody say Jehovah Shammah. That means that God is there. God is with you. Sometimes you got to pray to him. Jehovah Shammah, I need you right now. I don't need to hear nobody's voice but your voice. I don't need to hear nobody's opinion about me but your opinion. We have to be mindful in that isolated place. In that isolated environment when you're just, it's just you and the Lord. Questions will come in your mind. What is God doing? How many have ever been there? Lord, what are you doing? Why are you allowing it to happen? Why are they saying this? Why in the name of, am I saved and, and feeling like I'm all alone? And we got to be mindful. We never know what God is doing once again in the background. I, I'm encouraging every believer to believe in the all-knowing God, the omniscient God. Let me tell you, he's always paying attention to you. He knows what you're going through. He feels your infirmity. He understands your situation. Matter of fact, he knew you were going to be alone, looking out into nowhere. You don't even see what's on the other side of your blessing, but you know the God that created heaven and earth is going to make a way out of nowhere so you see something. Isolation will make things look opaque. You know, you know a dirty window that you can't see through? But you know that there's something on the other side of it? The Lord said, don't be afraid to be alone with me. See, some of you have a struggle. Let me calm down a little bit. Some of you struggle with being alone. You would lose your mind if somebody stole your cell phone. Because you can't be alone. If you couldn't call somebody, you'd lose your mind. And this is a, this, this, we live, we're living in a generation where a computer, I brought one up here, we can't do nothing without this. But sometimes we got to shut this off and say, Lord, speak to me. If you're going to transform me, speak to me. There's no power in this. But there's power in God. Oh, glory to God. You're so alone that then when there's nobody to take a picture of, we don't even need them poles no more. Our arms have grown because we're taking... And you rearranging your furniture because you ain't cleaned the house. That's enough. God will tell you about yourself when you're alone. See, that's why some people don't want to be alone. They like a lot of noise around them. But when the music stops, and we've all gone home, and you go into your secret closet, and you say, Lord, speak to me, be careful because he's going to say something. See, some of us are afraid of what we're going to hear. And then when the Lord starts talking, you turn your music on. 
Or you start being distracted by, by something. Let me tell you, this is what's challenging your process. Love the process because God is orchestrating it. Embrace the process because he's the engineer of it. He's the one that, he, he's the architect. He, he is the creator. I want to encourage a few people today. Trust in God knowing all about you. He knows your flaws. It don't mean you're not called. He knows your mistakes. It doesn't mean you're not saved. He's trying to show you he's your savior. He's trying to show you he's your redeemer. The plan, oh glory to God, that God has for you looks different than where you are right now. Some of y'all should be rejoicing. Y'all should say, let's go home. I'm, I'm going to praise the Lord and go home. on The plan that God has for you looks different than where you are right now. You're just in a stage of your life. But God ain't done with you yet. Oh, glory to God. This is going to really bless somebody. I don't know who needs it, but if you need it after I say it, just give God the praise for it. Everyone in here has a start. When I get to the caterpillar, the caterpillar doesn't start with a caterpillar. It starts as an egg. Everyone has a start. Everyone is going to have a finish. But I want to say to a few people, there is power in between your start and your finish. Why? Because God is in between your start and your finish. When you look in the mirror every day, you got to say to yourself, God ain't through with this guy. God ain't through with this woman. God ain't through with me yet. But in between my start and my finish, God steps in and says, don't give up. Don't give in. Hold on a little while longer. Stay in the race. Hold on to your faith. Declare before the devil, you can knock me down. But if God is in between my start and finish, he's going to reach down like he did Peter and pick me up. Oh, I wish you praise the Lord in here. I know y'all want to get to the butterfly, so let's get there real quick. Around, give me slide five if you can. See, this is some good news for everybody. See, this is your past right here. Oh, glory to God. It looks grotesque. It looks nasty. It looks like it has no purpose. But your future says, oh, glory to God. Your future says, I'm fly. Your future says, there's some brilliance in my life. But your future says that God is going to color you. Oh, glory to God. Your future is bright. Look at where you were. Crawling. You don't look like there's a lot of purpose there. But, but, but what's inside the caterpillar is everything that's needed to be a butterfly. Oh, glory to God. You don't look like much, but you're a butterfly. You're going from a worm to a butterfly. Tell your neighbor, I feel like flying. Mother Gary, I'm trying to get here slow. I'm trying to get here slow because I want the people to get it. I refuse to bounce from message to message. I told the women yesterday I could throw my iPad up in the air and wherever it fell down, I could find a message. But I want to give you something that is fresh. Something that is continuous until you get it. Because before the end of the year, some of the worm mentality is about to go out the window. Just remember, everything that's inside of that caterpillar says that it has the capacity to be a butterfly. Some of you have things in, on the inside of you that the world has not seen yet. 
And for some reason, you won't let them come out of you. Your pastor has told you Sunday after Sunday, start talking to God about what he wants you to do. Get rid of your idea. Oh, glory to God. Could you imagine if the caterpillar said, no, I don't want to be a butterfly. But God has put instincts inside of the caterpillar that says enough is enough. You've been crawling long enough. It's time to isolate yourself so you can get a word from the Lord. Y'all got to come next week. Y'all got to come next week because you'll see this a little bit clearer. Give me eight more minutes and we'll be at the, we'll be at the Lord's table. Right. I'm just going to go as far as I can this morning. Right. Your past and your future. No wallowing in the worm mentality no more. Mm -mm. You can accept that function but so long. Some of you on Monday morning, you got one more day to isolate yourself. Yeah, sure do. You got the rest of the day to isolate. Let me tell you something. Before you hit the parking lot, I guarantee you, I'll be the prophet right now. Somebody going to say something to you. They're going to say, uh, uh, never mind. I know what Pastor Rod said, never mind. I'm going to keep doing the same thing I've been doing because I'm satisfied with that. But the Lord said, look, I got more for you. See, let me tell you, the Lord, the Lord gets a kick out of when you telling him no and saying, I ain't giving up on you yet. John said it like this. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. How many received that? Beloved, now we are the sons of God. You look at yourself and say, I don't look like a son of God, but the word says, beloved, now I am a son of God. Well, you know what I used to do, Pastor Rob? Yeah, I know what you used to do. Are you saved? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Be beloved, now you are the sons of God. You know the mistakes I've made? Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Being a son is now, not tomorrow. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a son of God. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, which lets us know that God is not done with us yet. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall know. We shall know. Some things you just got to know. You have to know what God's word says. Even if life tries to cancel what God has said, we have to do like the old church said. You got to know that you 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 know. That you say, you got to know that you have a purpose. You got to know that God is serious about you. Tell your neighbor, God is serious about you. Nicole, you say it too. Say it, say it to Shayla. Say it, say it. That's a personal joke between me and her. But, but God is he, he's serious about you. He loves you that much, but I would be wrong to tell you that the enemy wants you to backslide. He wants you to give up on the purpose that God has put before you. He doesn't want you to believe that you are a new creature. He doesn't want you to believe that you'll do anything for God, David. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear, but when he shall appear, we shall be, does the scripture say, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. The only way you're going to see God is if you see Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Another, another, another thing, you know. Let me tell you, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. You can't see a spirit. You see God in Jesus. The scripture says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. That means he has form. 
the spirit takes on form. You're going to see where I'm going in a minute. Oh, glory to God. See, many of you think, you know, you don't look like much, but you're, you're still taking form. You're still being shaped. Let me tell you what's inside the caterpillar. Put him back up there. Put him back up. Boy, when, he, when the caterpillar goes in, in the cocoon, their eyes in the cocoon, their legs being formed in the cocoon, Oh, glory to God. There are wings being formed in the cocoon. Everything you see is in the caterpillar. Oh, glory to God. Jesus, may God take form. Because the scripture says, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I don't know why I'm going this way. Somebody needs this this morning. Because Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. How you going to know what the form is if you can't see the form? Oh, let me stop there. God said, let there be light. Yeah. And there was light. Yeah. He spoke into nothing and it became what he wanted it to be. But when it was time for a redeemer, the redeemer, oh glory to God, had to be a man. Oh glory to God. He had to be a Jew. Oh glory to God. He had to be willing. He had to be able. He had to be a relative of all mankind. He had to be a kinsman. If God was to look around and say, who qualifies? He would say, nobody qualifies. But when I see myself, which really has no form, but I got everything that's needed in the name of the Lord to save the world, he said, I think I'll become man. Oh, glory to God. I'll lower myself and become man. John said it like this. And we beheld his glory <laughs> as the only begotten of the Father. I don't know where I'm going. Help me, Lord. Full of grace and truth. Oh, glory to God. Full of grace and truth. So spirit took on a body. Oh, glory to God. And hallelujah. John took a little further. He said, John 10 and 10 says these were I and my Father. Our one. Oh, glory to God. Not working together. We ain't the dynamic duo. I and my father are one. He had to take on a four. Oh, glory to God. I could, I could preach this for a year. Oh, glory to God. He took, he took on the form of a servant. Oh, glory to God. He, found, he didn't find it robbery. The Bible says he didn't find it robbery to be equal with God. Oh. Four. When we see Jesus, we see the four. Oh, glory. We see the template of what God would look like walking the earth. We see how we should conduct ourselves in our transformation that God has given to us. It looks like this. I got to go to communion, y'all. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Give me the mic so I can, so I can inspire y'all a little bit. Because some of y'all look like I'm, I'm preaching Allison in Wonderland and the Wizard of Oz in the name of the Lord. But you got to know that God has given us Jesus because he gave us himself when he gave us Jesus. He was no less God. He was no less human and no less divine. He was 100% God and he was 100% man. And he's telling us that we need to be transformed spirit, soul, and body. Because the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Does anybody I feel like praising God because he came from heaven to earth. Oh, glory to God. God came from heaven to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Oh, you ought to praise God in here. I come to tell you when it's all said and done, he comes to the earth. He says, I'm going to become a man. Oh, glory to God. And the Bible lets us know in the beginning was the word. Jesus was the word. And the word was 
with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and it dwelt among us he dwelt among us give God the praise that he loved us enough to die for us to dwell among us so that we could have transformation power oh glory to God I know I've been transformed because I can love those that hate my guts I love those that talked about me if they talked about Jesus they gonna talk about you when they talk about you don't go back let the devil know I've been transformed from the inside out oh you ought to praise him oh glory to God and the Bible lets us know that when Mary it was time to hallelujah the name Jesus the angel said you got to ask the angel because the angel got the revelation of who Jesus was let me say it one more time the angel got the revelation of who Jesus was oh glory to God and the angel didn't say name him Joseph Jr. but his name shall be called Jesus which means God is a salvation but he didn't stop there he said his name shall be called Emmanuel which is interpreted I wish you listened to me which is interpreted God is with us hallelujah hallelujah not hanging around us but in Jesus God is with us I want to say to a few people that know you've been transformed no matter what it look like no matter what it sound like God is with you look at your neighbor they may be discouraged but tell them God is with you so Jesus hallelujah grew up as a Hebrew boy he probably played with a traitor he probably lit a menorah every now and then he grew up just like any other Jewish boy oh the Lord of God the Bible doesn't speak to him about him from the age of 12 to the age of 30 oh the Lord of God but when he showed up he showed up to the Apostle John and John said finally all of you the Savior is here the one that I said that wasn't I wasn't worthy to untie his sandals he's the light of the world but when John baptized him the Bible says he heard a voice from heaven and hallelujah the Spirit of God ascended upon him like a dove oh, the Lord of God that's why the Bible says that great is the mystery of godliness for God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles received up in the glory believed in all the world you need to give God some praise in this place if you don't believe that Jesus was God can we go to the conversation that John had with his disciples oh I feel like preaching on communion Sunday morning oh glory to God hallelujah Jesus said to the disciples let not your heart be troubled if you believe in God believe also in me let me repeat it one more time if you believe in God believe also in me Jesus is saying you said he was God it's a mystery you can't understand it because one plus one in the name of the Lord plus one in school it equals three all day long but in the spirit one plus one plus one it equals one because there's one Lord one faith one baptism you ought to praise him he said in my father's house a many mansions if it were not so I would have told you hallelujah 
hallelujah he said if I go Jesus said if I go hallelujah away in the name of the Lord he said I prepared a place for you and if I go I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also you ought to praise him in here one of the disciples looked up, hallelujah, he said, how can I know the way, where are you going, Jesus, Jesus said, I, 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 I am the way, the truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me, oh glory to God, Philip stood up and said, Lord, if you just show us where you're going, hallelujah, if you show us the Father, we'll be satisfied. Let me say it again. Philip said, if you show us the Father, we will be satisfied. Jesus said, Philip, look boy, I called you three and a half years ago and you still ain't got it? What's wrong with you? When you see me, when you see me, me. Oh, glory to God. When you, that's right, when you see me, I don't know how to preach it to you. In the name of the Lord, a kindergartner could understand it. Micah could understand it. Corey could understand it if I explained it to him. But some of y'all still don't get it. But don't get mad at me because Jesus said, when you see me, you've seen the Father. How sayest thou then? How could you ask such a stupid question? When the blinded eyes are being opened, the dead are being raised, and demons are being cast out, Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father, how seest thou then, show us the Father, give God some praise, give him praise, that he came from heaven to earth, to show us the way, from the to the cross hallelujah from the cross to the grave they hug him high y'all to praise him they he bowed his head for me he died can somebody praise God for the transforming power of the love of Jesus give God some praise if you know of his communion Sunday morning that you've turned to God shout yes shout yes shout yes praise him like you love him Praise him like you're on your way. In the name of Jesus, give him glory. You know you've been transformed when you're feeling like a worm, but you know that God has more for you. I'm going to close on this point because in your process, there's going to be some good, there's going to be some bad, there's going to be some ups, there's going to be some downs. There's going to be some light places. There's going to be some dark places. There's going to be some times of discouragement. And there's going to be some times of encouragement. There's going to be some times of confusion. There's going to be some times when you got your right mind. There's going to be some times of peace. And times of war. Times of crying and times of laughter times when you want to live times when you want to die but let me take Paul's words to the Romans Romans 8 and 28 says these words and we know that all things work together 
for the good. Can I get some people to praise him? All things work together for the good. Hey, so that lets me know no matter what the odds look like, no matter if it seem like the bottom is going to fall out, no matter what your boss thinks about you, no matter if they trying to destroy your name, no matter if they walk all over you and throw you under the bus, there's somebody going to have a parking lot meeting about you, but no matter where you are, the Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love God, testify to your neighbor and say, I love the Lord, hallelujah, and I won't take it back. Come on, preach with me. Tell your neighbor, I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. She love me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, she love me. Yes, she loves me. And I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. Living, he love me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin far away. He justified me. Forever. One day, he's coming back. When you know, how do you know who's coming back? Some folks say God is coming back. But I come to tell you, he's coming back. Because he's coming back with a body. His name is Jesus. The Bible says he's Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. The one that is. The one that is. The one that came to live, to die, and to rise. How do I know? I'm going to see Jesus because John said he has the eye as the flame of fire, a voice of many waters, his feet in the name of the Lord look like polished brass that was burned in a furnace. Do you believe you're going to see Jesus? He loves you. But the Bible says, hallelujah, and hallelujah, that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called. Do I got anybody? You know you're called. Open up your mouth and give God the praise because many are called and few are chosen. Put your hand over your heart and say, I'm called. According to his purpose, missionaries, your God, according to his purpose, if you believe, shout yeah!
and he's your savior. He's your redeemer. He's your healer. Come on, worship him. We're getting to worship him, worship him, worship him. We're getting to ready to eat from the Lord's table, but I want you to put him at the center of your thoughts right now. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth. Just lift him up. Lift him up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, you are Alpha. You are Alpha. And Omega.
worship you. Worship you. Deacons, ministers, let's prepare to take Holy Communion. Put your mind on Jesus. You may be seated. I'm going to ask you to reverence the presence of God. Reverence the move of God. Minimize any conversation, shut them down completely, and don't talk to anybody unless it is absolutely necessary. Peace was upon him. 